Wall Street Memes Casino. I'm fine. And Sportsbook. This is Joe Pugh for IFL TV. We're here at the Camden. Yeah. Coogan's over there. Damn. You spoke to Coogan on Zoom for about 40 minutes the other day, so yeah, that was a podcast, not an interview. All right, no problem. It's <laughs> nice, it's nice. Um, yeah, doubling up today because it's the start of a big, big fight week. Joshua Boatsy versus Dan Aziz, finally. Uh, yeah, just uh, cannot wait for Saturday night. I can't wait. It's like eight, seven deep in this gym uh, for the public workout. It shows the appetite for this fight. It's one of those fights, it's, it's a South London team. I'm surprised we're not in a gym in, in like in Miguel's or something like that doing, doing this presser. Um, I think it's such a, a good energy, good vibe, something really good to look forward to. Both fighters, you can sit, make an argument for both parties winning. Common sense would tell you to, to lean towards Joshua Boatsy because he's number one in the world. He's the one that's, that's had all the smooth. He's the one that's, you know, it's, 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 you know at one point he said he's like a young version of Evander Holyfield. Then you look at Dan. Dan's come through and done it the traditional way when the British Commonwealth European. He's done his job. I think, you know what, to me, it's a great fight. It's a great fight of two honest professionals. Something that I'm really looking forward to, uh, involving yourself is the first ever live head-to-head. This is going to be something special, isn't it, on Box Park Wembley? I do. I think it's great for the fans to actually see how this is done. I think it's uh, great pressure for the fighters to see how they perform under pressure. Because usually for a fight, you fight your way out of the pressure. But when you're sat there and someone's talking to you, and you can't fight your way out of it, and you've got your fans behind you saying, yo, don't let him say that shit to you. You know, it's putting fighters under pressure, so they've got to be responsible, respectful, but, but, but have an ego to say, no, no, you ain't saying that to me. So I actually like the fact that it's live. I hope it's the first of many, uh, and I'm really looking forward to it. With Joshua Boatsy, is he got most of the pressure, do you think? Because, as you said, he's the golden boy. He come out of that Olympic system. Dan Aziz just done everything step by step, slowly building his career. The pressure is definitely on Joshua Boatsy. Joshua Boatsy, if he loses, it means he's going back. He's number one, he's above Dan. Dan's come up and, and picked it up, and he's put his, 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 his name in everybody's mouth. Everybody's talking about So Josh is looking back thinking, well, you used to be my sparring partner. I used to deal with you every day of the week. They've done thousands of rounds. So Josh cannot afford to lose because that says his career is going backward as far as he's concerned. As far as he's concerned. So the pressure is on Josh and Boatsy no matter what. How important is it for these big domestic fights to kind of carry on being made when we're seeing all the fighters go over to Saudi Arabia. This is not just South London, but this is a pride of Britain, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I think it's a great fight. I think, look at domestically, what's out there, like anyway. I'm right in the ring now, you've got Ben Whitaker, yeah. who's, who's somewhere that's going to come up, and he's going to be one that everybody's talking about next year. This guy's doing everything right so far in his career. And so when we're talking about Ben, we're talking about Ben Watson, we're talking about Yard, we're talking about Lyndon Arthur, we're talking about Smith. Right behind you, you've got the future right there. So these guys, I think, just domestically, there's so many fights that, that, that can happen, so much excitement in the light heavyweight division that can happen. It's mad. We saw this a couple of years ago, last year, with the, with the, with the cruiserweights uh, here in the UK. Now it's with the light heavyweights, the, like, the best fights are here in the UK. You talk about star power and people who transcend the sport. Ben Whitaker could really be that guy. Um, love him or hate him, everyone really will watch him. Ben Whittaker is that guy. Um, he is that guy that's got character. He's got he's got panache. He's got he's got that that marmite appeal about him. Uh, and I've seen it. You know, it's not something you made up. I've seen it firsthand when when Nas came through. So the things they love and love about Ben, we saw the same with what what Nas got. And and so like it or not, you know, history. You know, the journey is as important as the destination. And his journey right now. Is, is exactly the same footsteps, exactly the same way. So good on him. Adam Azim defending his European title against Enoch Paulson. With Adam, he's moved so, so quick to get to that European level, but is it important to, to kind of take a step back and at some point this year have a big domestic gut check? Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. So now he's at domestic level, he's fighting the former European champ- champion. And so now... And, and he's still, you've seen his fights, he's still, got, he's still got a lot to learn, but you also see he's still got a lot of skill. He's got the power, he's got the youth, he's got the adaptability. Now he's getting in there with somebody that's been champion. 
So this will be another little gut check for him. So on the domestic scale, he's looking back thinking, I'm, I've got my business to do. And if you get my way, I'm going to steamroll us through you. I think it's a perfect match for him to get in there with a European champion, somebody that's been there, got the experience. And so for, 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 for Adam, uh, good shout, uh, good learning fight. I think he's probably four fights away from me in the finished article. But I think at this stage of his career, this is a good fight. Certainly, tune in to Sky Sports on Saturday night. On the way up to Camden today, Johnny, um, I was listening to your podcast with Spencer Oliver on Talk Boxing. Very outspoken about the Furiousic fight, I'm sure you'll agree. And uh, how kind of reliable are your sources that Tyson Fury isn't having the best time in sparring? Very reliable. And, and, and I'm quite sure if, if Fury's team see this, they'll be pissed off. Yeah. Not at me. Well, it shouldn't be at me. I'm on the messenger. Yeah. You should be pissed off at somebody chatting their business. Mole in the camp. But, of course, yeah. but also... Joe Pugh wants an interview with me as well. Oh, oh. Hang on a minute, I've got to ask you this. One, why are you always telling the world you're fasting when you're an Adonis anyway? Yeah, what have you got to do? But secondly, why are you always criticising my mate Tyson Fury? Yeah, number one, I'm not criticising. Number two, I, I can't believe you've got, you've got Coogan as your Uber driver. You are the Don. Have you done that? Cook, I'm, I'm like working with his understudy, and Cook has popped up. What, what, why, are you play, why are you playing Joe down now? Yeah. Oh, sorry, mate. You left, me, you left me as well, Gareth, so it's fine, mate. For him. I was never with you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, so what we're saying. Why are you so person? critical? Do you want to stay in this? Do you want to stay in this? We've just been talking about is there anything wrong with Tyson Fury's resume? Nothing wrong with it. Tyson Fury, again, I expect Tyson Fury to be on his underneath. Do not shoot the messenger for the message. Now, Tyson Fury and his team will see me saying this and think, Nelson, you shit house. But they'll know if it's the truth or not. They'll know they've got a mole in the camp. But you know what? Who's has got a mole in the camp but two? I know stuff like something that's been happening in this camp. So this isn't just gossip. This isn't the media of making shit up because I've got to back it up. I can't tell you where I've got it from because that means someone's going to get in trouble. But what I'm saying to you is, Tyson knows what I'm saying is correct. So Tyson knows there's a, that, that Tyson knows no matter what, I don't like the fact that you've actually spoken out about this. I'm saying this because I expect Tyson Fury to be Oli Zanussi. I do as well. But, but the I think Tyson it'll be a draw. Fury, the Tyson Fury that turned up against Oli uh, 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 Nagano gets knocked out. The Tyson Fury I'm hearing is getting manhandled in the gym gets knocked out. Tyson manhandled Fury, by who? I think I'm stupid. Right, so so the Tyson no, man handled by who? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm talking two of them. So the Tyson, the Tyson Fury, the fire to the Ingano fight, he beats. I'm hearing he the opposite. Beats. I'm okay, hearing he manhandled no, somebody. That's no problem. That's, and no that's no why problem. they went home. That's no problem. Hey, hey, I, I'm not even talking about. You, you can talk about your own. All I'm saying to you is this: Tyson Fury has been uncharacteristically quiet. No, he can't win, he can't lose. He looks in when, great shape. When, 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 he, when he shouts and he screams, everybody's like, Tyson Fury should have. When he's quiet, it's like, God, he can't win. So what does that tell you? Because nobody tells Tyson Fury what to say or do. Not Bob Aaron, not Frank Warren, not, 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 not uh, Spencer Brown. So, so, so he, he's the boss. He's the bus driver, ticket collector, inspector. I passenger. think he's doing his so work So what I'm right saying now. to you is this. Tyson Fury is an emotional character yeah. that owns his shit. So now the fight's on. There are things that you're hearing and seeing. I'm thinking, no, don't sit right. I hope I'm wrong because I've always said Tyson Fury beats Alexander Usyk. All right, let's throw ahead to March. Can Francis Ngannou create enough jeopardy with Anthony Joshua to cause an upset there? No. Why? Because Anthony Joshua, Joshua has been gifted with hindsight. Hindsight is he's not going to make the mistake. Tyson Fury did, and then and the rest. No of one's ever up. beaten Nagano up, well, not uh, even in MLA. No, no, I'm, not, or I'm not saying he beats him up, and, and he won't knock him out. Ty, uh, Anthony Joshua. The Could two, it be an uncomfortable night for him? Anthony Joshua, two-time heavyweight champion of the world, and there is nobody, as far as I'm concerned, in the top ten in the heavyweight that is going uh, that 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 Ungano can outbox because he's not been in our sport. Our right. sport. Long Are enough. we still fascinated by it, though? Oh, we're fascinated by it. But Anthony Joshua wins this hands down. Okay. But, but he doesn't get a knockout. He has to box. If he gets greedy, he gets knocked out. Here's a big question. If Francis Ngannou wins, does he fight for the undisputed? Uh, he does because he's got that position. He's leaped from uh, Deontay Wilder because Deontay Wilder turned all overnight. And so, therefore, he's in that position. I said and Jang and Parker. I, I, I said it's risk reward. Risk reward is this. Yeah. You know, you're going to get reward is a big purse. The risk is if he loses, Anthony Joshua, 
how can he stand and say, you know, and carry on hungrily, successfully, campaign respectfully as a heavyweight, losing to a guy that's had one professional fight? Seven years world cruiserweight champion, 13 defences, lion, he's a lion, he's a lion from Sheffield, I'm up there next week, I'm coming to see you, it's Wednesday, and obviously you tell the world about your fasting every week now, <laughs> from your bespoke kitchen that looks like it's a TV programme, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, no, no, no he's a, he's a, I'm a civilian, you can jab me as well. Not bad that, not bad that, son. But, Sexy devil. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. It's Wednesday. Look at that. Are you are you off the fast already or not? Uh, I still finished my fast yesterday morning, there you six go. fifteen. I did thirty six hours every week. Come join me. Join me. Folks. I do it any I am fasting. But I'm April doing, the first we're doing eighty six hours. April I don't know, I don't need to do quite so long. Oh. One meal a day, that's enough for me, and then I'm fasting the rest of the time. Alright, good for you. You know? Alright. No, All right. no 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 alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> Love a bit of tequila. I mean, I mean, a, little, a little bit of tequila to see me through. That's always good. Cheers, Johnny. And Sam. Johnny, I've got one more question. I've got one more question. Um, yeah, uh, Gareth just interrupting there, but that's okay. What did you make? Oh, Love the guy to death. You said it, white chocolate. What did you make? Oh, I don't even know what to think of that. I don't even know what to think of that. What did you make of? John Fury going absolutely mad at Carl Frotch yesterday. Did you see that clip? I like John Fury. I like John Fury because John Fury doesn't chat shit. John Fury is a straight talker. And he doesn't want to be made to look stupid. So he's not going to tell you something that's not true. He knows his business. And, and, so, and, that, and, and like it or not, he can be at Achilles heel because he'll tell you how it is. He wasn't happy with training camp. And he said it. He's, Tyson's brother said he wasn't happy with the backslappers. John Fury, John Fury's a straight talker. I like him. He might be in your face. He might be all over you. And he defends his son like he should do. John Fury knows his business. Right? So regardless of what anybody says, whatever they think of him, he's going to tell you, he's going to tell you straight. Now, now he's pissed off with Carl Frost because Carl Frost has said something that's, that's dissing his son. So he's pissed off. That's his son. You know, so him going at him, it's nothing new. That's what John does. But just mark my word, he doesn't lie. John, he doesn't like and listen to the words he uses when he's talking about fights or fighters or fights happening. Listen to the words he uses. He doesn't lie because his ego won't let him look stupid. So, so I, I, I like John, regardless of what it, what he thinks of what I'm saying about his son or training camp. I like him because he's a straight shooter. He's not a shit house. So say how it is. Excellent, Johnny. Thank you very much, much for speaking to me and. Uh, Gareth for most of it but yeah <laughs> cheers mate and uh, enjoy the rest of the week mate thank you very much Wall Street memes casino I'm fine and sportsbook